Welcome to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. Well, today we're heading far out to sea to San Nicolas Island. This distant island holds great numbers of game fish and is a favorite spot for many of Southern California's sport fishing captains. Well, today we hope to find some shallow water rockfish and if we're real lucky, we might even run into a great black sea bass. And later in the show, we're going to visit the cannery restaurant in Newport Beach, where they're going to cook up one of their favorite white sea bass recipes just for us. So stay tuned for this week's episode of Sport Fishing. That's a pretty good sized bass there. I think that one will go six pounds. Yeah. And we're fishing at San Nicolas Island. We're in shallow right now, about 60 feet of water. And this is typical of the kind of fish that you can find out here. Lots of calicos, but even more rockfish. The large reds, lynx. We'll see what we're going to get. Well, welcome to this week's sport fishing as we fish aboard the Islander. And I'm going to go see if I can get me one of those fish. Okay. <laughs> Yeah? I'm going to bounce him. Yeah. 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 And this is typical of the kind of fish you can yeah. get here. We've got another fish going here. This is pretty typical of the kind of action you see here at San Nicolas Island. And the reason our skipper Mark brought us out here is these waters are basically untapped. Not too many boats come all the way out here. We're a good 70 miles from San Pedro. And this is the kind of rewards we got. All right. So let's get back on. 28, yeah. Thanks a lot. The rock fishing has been pretty good here at San Nicolas. And most of the guys are just using small strips of squid with like dropper loop rigs, You're getting it all the way to the bottom, fish are coming up and biting it. What I'm going to do is switch over to a small iron jig. This is made by Bomber, but when you see it in the stores, it has a treble hook here. Well, because we're rock fishing, and what I want to use is a whole squid here, I've switched over to a long shanked hook, and all I'm going to do is just pin this on. And the reason for the long shanked hook is so that I can put the squid through there three, four times. So I got it like this, and now it looks like a giant squid to the rockfish. I'm just going to go ahead and toss it out here. And you don't need to cast far because we're fishing right over the rocks, so just toss it underhand. Here we got a fish going here. Phillip's got one. We got actually two, three fish going right here. I'm just going to let my jig go all the way to the bottom. What do you got there? Ah, oh, you got two little rock, rockfish. Now we got a white fish going back here. Another fish on the corner. So all I'm going to do is just let my jig fall all the way to the bottom. And if I don't get bit on the way down, 
I let it actually hit the bottom and then just bounce it a few times off the rocks and then lower and raise my rod tip so something comes along. Just work it up. No, I don't think it's a lingcod. Just a rockfish. Lingcod, you can pretty much tell because you feel their heads pulling on it. It's probably just a little rockfish. This is what we're trying to get, this quality rockfish. It's super delicious. I like to steam these, but you can cook them any way you like, and it's great eating. And this is a jig again, just using a small spoon jigs made by Bomber. And this is a case where, and I do this a lot, I might see a jig that I like, but I don't think it's rigged you know, perfectly for this type of fishing, and I'll change it. In this case, I went with a long shanked hook and got rid of the treble hook and just converted it for our local type of fishing, and in particular for rock fishing for right now, and it worked perfectly. Here's the proof. I'll cook this one up tonight. <laughs> the Galley, recipes and tips for preparing your fish at home. This week, The Galley is brought to you by Acme Lures. Standing next to me is Terry, the manager here at the Cannery Restaurant, and Bill Hamilton. He's the owner of the cannery, located in beautiful Newport Beach. And Bill and Terry, thank you both for having us over. Thank no, you. We're glad to have you here. You know, this is our 20th anniversary, Dan, and uh, as a restaurant, before that, for 50 years, it was a fish cannery, the largest employer in Newport Beach, as a matter of fact. So um, hmm. since the last 20 years, we've enjoyed this waterfront location, served a lot of fresh fish, and show people how a cannery used to look. So this kind of is at Newport Beach. It's a beautiful restaurant, but I noticed tied up in front here, you have a couple of large boats. Are those boats connected with the restaurant? Yes, we own two boats that we use for private parties as well as uh, public uh, tours of the harbor. We serve food and beverages aboard. And they can be catered for private parties, weddings, and corporate affairs. It's a very nice adjunct to the uh, restaurant since we're right on the waterfront. Oh, that's nice. And I, I would take it for granted that since the restaurant's part of the boat, you have uh, catering services and everything. That's right, and we also have a sport fishing boat that oh, we, yeah, we charter out of here. That's right, so we uh, can send people out. You might want to come down here and try one of your locally cooked dishes. And like you pointed out, you have the local fish and you prepare them here. But for us today, that's part of the reason we're here. We wanted to try one of those. What do you have for us? We have local sea bass. That's white sea bass, and we're going to prepare it Cajun style. And that's going to be a fillet of fish type? Of yes, it is. Okay, great. Well, can we go to the kitchen and see it? Yes. Let's go. Okay, Terry, we have the fish here. What do we have here? We have local sea bass we're going to cut up for you today. And um, our chef is going to show you how to cut it up. Okay, this is Roberto De Leon. And he's the head chef here? Yes, he is. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So we're starting off with the whole white sea bass that was caught locally. And we're going to, I guess, first thing, just fillet it. All our fish that we serve here at the cannery is fresh fish. Notice the way Roberto cuts it. He's going real slow, making sure not to waste any of the meat. This is all bone in here. There's no meat being wasted. You can see the beautiful cut there. And what's the key to making a nice fillet? Take your time? Or as you cut the fish like this? OK, the important thing to cut a fish, that's uh, Take your time, cut it very slowly, so you have any waste. Is a white sea bass a pretty easy fish to fly? Yeah, white sea bass is a very easy fish to cut. After we get all done with this side, then we'll go ahead and take the skin off it. Yeah, we'll take the skin off. And then we'll go to the other side. We got a little belly right here. Is that the rib cage area? It's uh, the front piece. Okay. We're we'll ready to take the skin off. So you're just sliding that knife underneath the skin and the yeah. meat? You don't have to pull the meat, anything. Just pull the skin off. 
be nice. Go very slowly. I wish I was able to play on that easily. Yeah, nice. Easy, nice. Piece he makes it look very easy. So you see the skin here that he pulled off. We have no meat on it. This is perfect. We don't waste anything at all on this. Okay, Dan, we've got a filet wash. Now we're going to show you how to prepare it. Roberto? Okay. Okay. We got a seasoning for the blackened. Let me show them what the seasonings are. We have, there's different amounts. We have one half measure on the red pepper and cayenne. Because these are very hot, you only want to do a half of these two here. The rest will be one full measure. We'll start with, we have paprika, garlic, oregano, spices, seasoning spices, white pepper, and salt. You notice that he puts a smaller amount of the salt in. You do it to your own liking. If you like it very spicy, you can add a little extra cayenne pepper or the crushed red pepper. So we're just going to go ahead and mix this all in. We do this in a mixing bowl. Mix it all together. Then we'll be putting the fish into it. This is our washed filet. Washed filet. And we'll put it down in and make sure you get it into all the little pockets. The fish is wet, so it's going to absorb a lot of that blackening, the seasoning, very well. Once we have all the seasoning, Roberto's going to take it now and we're going to Start cooking. Okay. Now we're gonna put this on the iron skillet. Yeah, that's a that's really a must. It's one of the most important things about blackening fish is the pan we use. Now, how long is this pan warmed up? Ten minutes or so. Roberto, how long do you normally warm a pan up for one fillet? You need to warm up for about three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. On high heat. On um, very high flame. Okay, now we'll put the fish in the pan. How long will we cook it here, Robert? We're cooking about two minutes each side. Two minutes? Let's go ahead and take this fish off. Let's take it more ready. Ready to take it off here. Ready to take it off. So. Okay, well here comes Roberto with the, Roberto with the finished dish. Oh, that looks beautiful. Well, thanks a lot, Roberto. That looks wonderful. Did a good job, Roberto. I'm That's gonna good. go ahead and try a piece. Hope you guys don't mind. Now, <laughs> got my own little audience here watching. <laughs> That's delicious. That's the best red sea bass I've ever had. Thanks a lot, Roberto. Thank you. Thanks, Bill, for having us. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Terry, for being and there with thank us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And for all of you that never been down here to the cannery, I highly recommend you come down and try one of their great local dishes. I think I'm going to take this one to the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
So that's why you don't need to make a long cast or anything. The fish are right below us. The skipper's already passed over the area, brought the boat back so that we drift right over it. Now you just keep it in free spool and let the line come off. You just want that line just to come all the way off there. So that lure slides all the way down the bottom. And the whole time that it's falling, it's just kind of fluttering down. So just keep giving it line. And we got a hook up there going. Fresh one. Just let it go all the way down there. Turn your feet a little ways. So got it down. And all I'm doing is just bouncing the jig from rock to rock down there. What I want to do every once in a while is take about four or five cranks up and then put it back in free spool and just let the jig fall slower. Just use my thumb to make the jig fall slower. And it, it'll just actually flutter down and it'll look like a crippled bait fish to the rockfish down below. Hopefully we can find a ling cut down there. <laughs> this might be the one we're looking for. Oh! 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 This could be the one. Yeah. This is a nicer fish, fishing up. An iron jig, a 4 0 right on the bottom. 30 pound test line. And the fish is starting to take some line off my reel. It's keeping it down deep. Remember, when you're rock fishing like this, you got to keep your jig or your bait right in the structure where the fish are. And that's what I was doing, just bouncing the jig back down the bottom. And this. This fish just came up and devoured it. When you got them coming up like that, just keep winding. Don't give them any slack. Let's see what this is. There it is. See what it is. It looks like the cod. There he is. Link cod. I'll bounce it. Let's, here we go. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're trying to catch. This is a link cod. Now in California, link cods have to be 22 inches. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure it. See that fish was just barely in there. See, and this is that jig that we're talking about. Just fishing this metal jig right on the bottom. It's a 4-0, and just bouncing it right in between the rocks. Here's proof that the fish are down there. We're going to go ahead and measure them real quick. Okay. Um, iron jig. Yeah. Excuse me a second. Okay, this is the same length for a halibut that is. This is the same length a halibut for 22 inches that it is for a ling cod. So this is a fish we just caught. It's way legal. This fish should go about 26 inches. This is just proof about using artificial jigs. You know, just use an iron jig like that. Come out here to San Nick. We're having a great time here on the Islander. Nice fish. Well, stay tuned and we'll be right back with more action aboard the Islander. The tip of the week is brought to you by Checkpoint Hook and Knife Sharpeners. For this week's tip of the week, we have owner operator of the Islander. Mark Paisano. Well, Dan, uh, fishing these rockfish like we did today, you don't necessarily have to use the ganyans and, and the heavier sinkers. Today we were using the jigs with very good success, and uh, what was working well for us was bouncing the heavy iron with a strip of rockfish on it. And basically, when you're pinning the, the bait on, you just want to pin it through one time, let it dangle freely. You don't want to clump it on the hook. That's very important to do it like that. Fishing the, the white iron for the white sea bass also. Uh, fishing a whole squid on an iron, same thing. Just pin it right through the tail section so it dangles freely like that. And uh, when you're working these jigs off the bottom, you just want to work them slowly, just, just enough to get the fish's attention and to get them over and to bite your jig. And a lot of anglers might think that that's too big of a bait, but really there's no problem with the fish eating that. Oh, no, not at all. This fish will devour that. Thanks a lot, Mark. Let's see what Juan's got there. Not a white. 
It's not a white one. Nah. I think it's a slide. Unless he weighed 200 pounds. So he's just dropping the rod, taking a crank or two up. All he's trying to do is just get a little bit of line back from the fish. This fish made a long run. Could be a number of quite a few different types of fish. Anything from a black sea bass to white sea bass to a giant bonita to a bat ray. We don't know. If it doesn't come in soon, I'm not sure one's going to last. <laughs> what the heck is that? Black sea bass. Ah! Yeah. Ah! yeah, just leave it there. Hang on, hang on. Don't do it yet. Oh, oh man. <laughs> this is a big black sea bass. They're protected in California, so what we're going to have to do is get the fish up. We're going we're gonna to pop its bladder. We can't really net this guy. And we have to. Look how big that is. Yeah! Woo! Woo! All right! Woo! 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 All right! Oh my god. Oh. Excuse me. This is not to be the guy who caught yeah. the fish. So I skipped the mark. This is a big black sea bass. I don't know, what do you think it'll go, about 80 pounds? Yeah, probably 100. Maybe 100? Yeah, probably 100. Let's make it 100. Yeah, it'll definitely go 100 pounds. That's a big fish. Got it on the iron jig. Woo! Come on, Now, we're going to have to release the fish because it's not legal to keep these in California. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, my. Oh, Ready? I get a picture of it. Yeah, baby! Yeah! Oh, yes. He's pressurizing. There he goes. God. He's gone. I'm done. Woo! All right, Juan, come here. <laughs> yeah, I delicious. I told you I was going to get in here somehow. <laughs> that was a great fish. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode Woo! of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us next week when we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. That was a good fish. All right, Mark, we can go home now. Yeah. <laughs>